All right, today we have a start of a new project. And the new project is simple. It is to replace the lead acid battery in my truck. But to make it less simple, we're not going to replace it with a lead acid battery. We're going to replace it with supercapacitors and lithium ion phosphate batteries. Uh, the point is hopefully this battery will outlast the uh, vehicle as far as lifespan and uh, it'll be lighter and overall more interesting project. Uh, has some other advantages to it. Uh, the supercapacitors can go really low as far as uh, temperature and really high as well as temperature and still give you quite a reasonable amount of starting power. Um, the uh, lithium iron phosphates are really good temperature wise too. Uh, the only gotcha is when you go down below freezing, they don't like to be charged below freezing. So we'll. Uh, have to let them warm up a little bit before charging them, but you can discharge them below freezing, which will also warm them up. Uh, we have is two lithium iron phosphide batteries. Uh, there's probably four cells in each one of these batteries, but they come in their own plastic packaging that's uh, very similar to a lead acid battery. Um, we have two of them in parallel. And I have already tested the capacity of these batteries and they uh, match what's written on the label fairly well. I'm interested to find out after a few cycles if that uh, stays, but uh, so far so good. Um, and the uh, other piece of the puzzle here is the supercapacitors. We have 18 of them. Um, they're in these modules of six, um, and they're in series. Uh, we have three of those modules, so uh, 500 farads, uh, 2.7 volts each. Um, I believe once you put them in series, it's about 83 farads times 3. Uh, do the math, it's in the 200 and something, 250 range maybe. But they're not going to give me what's on the label because I think a lot of people have tested these supercapacitors and found that they are a little short of their specs. But uh, one of these should be enough to start the vehicle all by itself, so three of them ought to be overkill. Uh, this is uh, not a new concept, by the way. Um, uh, supercapacitors for a starting uh, a vehicle uh, has been done before. I think it's mostly in heavy industry under, um, you know, uh, heavy equipment have used it for as a starter, as a starter battery. Um, I don't know what application exactly they're used in, but I have seen spec sheets and batteries rated, um, supercapacitors rated for that application. Of course, they're very, very expensive. This is cheaper. Um, also, we've seen this sort of combination of a lithium iron or a lithium ion battery and a supercapacitor before on the YouTubes. Um, several years ago, I think a bunch of people were, were doing similar things. What makes this special is each one of these batteries is only $30 each. Makes, these are 60 bucks, and these are $17 a piece. So, for the replacement of what my lead acid battery in my truck costs, which is for a good one is about $200 for one with a good warranty. This should come in cheaper and last longer, be more robust. Um, if we run it dead, unlike a lead acid battery, we can just charge it up again with no ill effects. Lead acid batteries, if you leave them dead, especially for a length of time, they begin to sulfate and lose capacity and life expectancy. Um, these won't have that problem. Um, but we're going to need a couple more pieces to make this work. Uh, the few more pieces in question are a current resistor. Uh, this current resistor is uh, going to be in the, between the uh, supercapacitors and the uh, lithium iron phosphates to limit the current of the charge and discharge of these lithium iron phosphates. The lithium iron phosphates, uh, these ones are not rated to be discharged at a high C rate. They're like only 0.5 C or something like that, and uh, recommended, and they have a burst, whatever. So we don't want to use these as the starter source, starter power source for the uh, vehicle. We want it to be the supercapacitors. If we simply put a resistor in line, that should make it so uh, the pixies want to flow out of the uh, supercapacitor much more willing than they want to flow out of... Uh, the uh, lithium iron phosphates. And what we have here is a 100 watt quarter ohm resistor. That should uh, take care of 
one aspect of it. Now, mind you, we're going to have to see how this works. This is an experiment and a journey. The uh, other bits and pieces that we're going to need, the fiddly bits, are um, some battery terminals so that we can make a, an adapter. You know, we don't have to adapt the vehicle. We can have terminals that are normal for a battery. So we can just put the battery terminals, battery cables right onto the terminals and uh, just be on our merry way or replace them or swap them out if this doesn't work. The other thing is we also have some ring terminals. I got some uh, already sized correctly for the bottom here. We're going to need more of those, so I've got more. And some different sizes for the uh, supercapacitor side. Um, also, a uh, what we're going to have here is I'm going to have this uh, current sensor in between the lithium iron phosphates and the supercapacitor so that we can monitor the current draw and charge of these batteries and find out what's really going on. I'm uh, going to need a microcontroller, probably an Arduino, to really make this work. I'll put it in line now and I will make it work later when we find that we need it. Uh, I have some more uh, connectors to connect onto the resistor here. Uh, I find that hard soldering to these big wire wound resistors are uh, this hard solder joint generally doesn't play nice especially in a vehicle, so I've got some crimp style connectors. Uh, and for wiring, which does play nice in this particular application, we have some silicone wire with a high, uh, uh, I want to say thread count, but that's not right, it's a uh, strand count. Yes, high strand count, uh, 10 gauge wire, we'll have three of these, uh, one off of each of these running to the terminal here. And uh, then we'll have a smaller 14 gauge uh, silicon wire running from the uh, lithium iron phosphates to the supercapacitors. I think that about covers most of what we need for this project. The uh, other thing I have is just a uh, piece of ABS plastic sheet here to mount everything to. Uh, probably make a nice box and probably insulate the box a little bit so that. Uh, protect our investments a little bit. Um, we'll see. That'll probably be uh, version 2. Alright, well, um, I guess the thing to do now is to put it together and see what we get. Um, the other thing to note is that uh, the lithium iron phosphates probably aren't actually necessary for this project. That uh, We could probably run the vehicle entirely off of the supercapacitors, supercapacitors if we wanted. We just wouldn't have any sort of real reservoir of power. You get a one or two good shots at starting the engine, uh, maybe a couple more, depending, and then you'd be done for. I did charge up one of the capacitor banks, and I did see that the voltage dropped fairly quickly. Uh, so there might be a, a, a pretty high discharge with these capacitors. That might be one of the reasons why they're so, much, so cheap, is that they have a very high uh, discharge, self-discharge. Uh, that might not be so great. We'll have to uh, test that further. Right now what I'm going to do is just wait until these charge up and see the balance board lights come on. Make sure that the balance boards are balancing the supercapacitors properly. I'm not sure that there's that's all that critical since I don't think these supercapacitors will ever be charged all the way up to their their full potential. But it'd be nice to see that it works. Um, then once it's uh, fully charged, I'm going to go throw it on the truck real quick and make sure that this capacitor bank actually can crank over the engine by itself. Uh, looks like we've got a little ways to go here. Um, we're up to 6 volts and climbing. So I have the uh, supercapacitors all wired together and then I made this uh, caddy for them out of that ABS. Uh, sort of made it a little more sophisticated than I thought. Just sort of uh, got to laser cutting and uh, sort of what happened. Um, I'm not sure if I like the design, but uh, at least it gives me something to hold it all together while I'm in testing. We'll see if this sticks around or not. It's sort of uh, supercapacitors will go on the bottom and then the lithium iron phosphates will sit up on top. 
like that, and we will uh, see where we go with that. All right, we have an update. I uh, went outside. It's um, raining outside and quite dark, uh, so I spare you the uh, video of me swapping out a battery in a truck. And then, of course, once I got out there, I realized I had the positive and negative reverse, so I had to swap those around, you know, pull all the supercapacitors back out and put them back in the right way. Uh, <clears throat> put the battery in, and sure, uh, put the supercapacitors in, sure enough, it starts the uh, truck up just fine. Um, but I think the uh, self-discharge of these capacitors is extremely high. I, uh, I'm going to have to test that because um, I'm not sure that that's uh, going to be satisfactory. Uh, I, I do suspect that these are quite low on their uh, uh, number of farads that they are as well because uh, I've had other supercapacitors before and uh, I turned the headlights on with the course of the vehicle off and the voltage started dropping pretty, pretty quickly. <clears throat> I'd say um, I get a couple of good cranks out of this before uh, it's you, you've got to charge it back up again. But uh, it worked um, pretty darn well, but unfortunately not quite as well as I expected it. And I suspect that I know why these supercapacitors are so cheap. We will do some more testing and find out what is really going on here. Well, this is the first carnation of this uh, experiment. Um, I think I'm going to put it into the uh, truck looking like this, sort of... Uh, use the mandatory amount of zip ties to keep it together. Um, probably try it for a, a few weeks and uh, let's get some more lighting in here. I believe the weakest link in this battery pack is going to be the supercapacitors. The uh, high self-discharge uh, rate is really high, much higher than I expected. Um, so that's that's probably going to be a, a problem. And also I did some more testing on the supercapacitors and I calculated that the capacity uh, the, the full um, the full amount of farads from this whole bank is uh, about 175 176 farads and I'm going to say it's at 15 15 volts because that's where the battery BMS's kick in is uh, just above 15 volts so we don't even get the uh, full 2.7 volts out of them so that's uh interesting uh, you note that I haven't chart I haven't put in the uh, current sensor in yet. Uh, it's not in yet. Uh, that's going to have to happen at a later date. I think I'm going to put it in the vehicle and just see how she does by herself and just get sort of a general sense of it for a little while. And I'll probably pull it back out and add that later. I have the uh, current resistor up here in parallel with the pack. And the whole thing is sort of kludged together at the moment and probably I don't know, more of an art piece than a functional caddy for this battery, but we'll, we'll work on it and uh, it'll get better. Well, uh, I think it's time to put it into the truck and see how she does. The supercapacitor battery is installed in my truck. Um, I, I think we're going to be doing some testing, some real world testing in it for a little while, and then uh, further testing on the supercapacitors and the lithium iron phosphates to see how they do. Um, also, I still need to build a, a battery box uh, that's proper for it and do some other tweaks as we find uh, necessary. So if you're interested um, there will be a second video on this so uh, stay tuned. Also I uh, felt it uh, necessary to mention that this is my first video. Uh, I know uh, I feel it's a little rough but uh, we'll get better. Thanks for watching.